Hello again, this is Mark Brunet with QBrush.com and in this chapter we're going to be talking about um, the base light setup and also colors. So we're going to be starting with the colors, uh, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, bring up the color, the light setup that I'll be using, so which is a simple three-point light setup, and apply it on something super simple before I go ahead and apply it onto the more uh, complex sketch that I, that we uh, that we did previously. So this is going to be so kind of like a, I guess a sphere. Uh, so it's going to be shaded super super simple. Uh, three three different light sources. The top one here uh, is going to be the main light source so this is the the brightest um, and it's going to be uh, I guess acting as the Sun in this case so um, it's going to be hitting the top of the head mostly and then the tip of the nose and that's about it so you know as you can see the nose I'm I'm only considering it's uh, kind of like a bump on this on this spher spherical surface so nothing too detailed very very rough uh, the second light source is going to be uh, what would be kind of like uh, the diffuse light coming from the sky? So this bluish, bluish light. In this case, it's a little bit, a little bit tinted uh, purple, just, uh, just you know, for the for the looks of it. Uh, this is what is going to give my shadows a tint. So no shadow should ver should ever be pure black. It should always be at least tinted a little, little bit by this by this light source. And then we have the bounce light finally, which is uh, the light coming from the main light source and then bouncing around in the scene picking up whatever color is in my scene and then bouncing it back up onto the character. In this case, right now my background is white, but, um, and uh, I don't think I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna have one for my actual painting either. So it's just, uh, you know, whatever. It's the, the same color as the main light source, except uh, uh, less intense. So this is uh, what my uh, final uh, head would look like, minus all the, you know, details for the, the facial features. So. This is the first step that you guys, uh, that everybody should do when they do this. So, uh, you know, understanding at least the main light setup, what it looks like on a very, very simplified version of their uh, their character or their, uh, you know, whatever it is they're drawing. And then after that, you know, you can go ahead and uh, look at the uh, uh, these things, for example, where you see all the different, you know, different angles, different, you know, curves in here. So the subtleties that uh, aren't uh, on this, the uh, you know the initial ones the, the simplified version and then try to sort of adapt the light setup to match uh, to match those uh, those more complex uh, volumes and surfaces. There's one more thing that I want to talk about before we actually go on to the the painting itself and that is uh, skin and how to shade it properly. Uh, skin is very particular uh, in a sense where uh, you know compared to plastics for example or metals. Hard surfaces uh, where the light, you know, either bounces off the surface and reaches your eye, or d just doesn't, and that, that you know that means that it's a, it's a shadow and it's completely black, or there's no there's no light that reaches your eye, as you can see on the right side here. Um, skin itself is translucent, meaning that uh, the light actually penetrates the surface up to, uh, to a certain extent. So you know it's not transparent. Not all the light gets through it, but some portion of light actually goes inside the surface of the skin, under the surface of the skin, bounces around a little bit. And then some particles do come out to reach your eye. So it's not uh, it's not quite like plastic. Um, and that effect is called subsurface scattering. So, for, you know, light particles will go into the skin, bounce around, hit like the blood vessels, for example, and then come out. And that what what you'll see is this sort of um, red tint, uh, you know, in the transition between light and black shadows. And that's going to be sort of like the the, the bleeding light uh, effect that you get on, on skin, or like wax, or uh, some some clothes or fabrics. So you can see here on the left side, uh, that's what you get. So there's no, you know, the shadow here should be white. Uh, should be white. Should be black if it was if it was a plastic or a solid surface. But it's not. Uh, the light actually enters the surface, bounces around uh, in that area, and then it gives uh, a slight tint, a uh, lighter tint to the uh, the shadow. On the right side, there's no bouncing whatsoever. It, you know, the, there's just no light that reaches our eyes. Uh, from that particular angle, and there's there's no yeah there's no bouncing around, so there's no there's no light. It gets completely black. Nothing reaches our eyes, and um, that's the main difference between skin and other materials like you know like solid materials. Um, and what that does, 
uh, you know you don't you don't need to understand all of that it really doesn't matter the only thing that you need to understand is the results is that skin will most of the time be a little bit lighter and the gradient won't be as as broad as it is with solid materials so uh, most of the time you won't go to complete black and uh, the the highlights will be a little bit more diffused so uh, you know if we look at a concrete example here with uh, something a little bit more simple you have a sphere uh, that is not skin so it just it happens to be the same color as skin but it's not skin uh, because you can see the uh, shadows are very very dark uh, but what happens if you introduce is uh, scattering uh, so something more like a, like skin so that the color will bleed a little bit so that the light will bleed onto the shadows a little bit and that you get this this kind of result here and you know if it was a different material if it was like a not skin for example if it was like a like wax or, or something else that the bleeding part so like the, the part in between uh probably wouldn't be red because there's there's no there's no blood in wax it would be a different color but in the case of skin just remember remember that you'll have this sort of this bleeding light going towards the shadow which will uh look uh, and have a little bit of a, a reddish tint so with that said, and now let's uh, let's get to it, and uh, let's get let's get started on this. Uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of layers here. Not none of them are really important. The only thing the only thing that really matter. Uh, most of them are just uh, layers where I have all the other sketches on them. Um, th there's going to be really two or three layers that I'll, that I'll be worried about this entire time. And right now, uh, I have my line art, which is on the top layer, and I'm just going to add a little bit of color just to give me give me a base before I actually merge those two and so I'll be working on the layer underneath the line and that's going to be you know just a normal layer and uh, the layer underneath all of that on the underneath those two is going to be my background layer so this one here uh, which is uh, I'm not sure what the background is going to be yet uh, it doesn't really matter because um, you know it's just it just helps support the uh, the the, the color uh, the the color palette I'll end up choosing but I'll I won't settle until the very end with the background so you know it'll, it'll keep on changing so here I'm just gonna grab something temp blur uh, blur it quite a bit so we don't we don't really see what it is uh, just give me something in the background to 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 start you know to play with it doesn't have anything it, it doesn't have to be anything concrete or anything um, that you can understand you know it's just something something there uh, to give me some sort of direction so in this particular case I didn't do I didn't plan my color palette ahead of time uh, because for portraits it's not it's not as important um, what I like to do is just try different things and see what works best at the at the very end uh, so you'll see you know the background color will change along the way the the color the the skin a little bit uh, you know the tints going to be adjusted throughout the process, so don't you know don't worry about it too much. But uh, at least I have something there to, to to get me started. So now you can also notice that I've merged my layers, my lines, and my colors. So uh, you know my lines are not as black. I actually like to tone them down a little bit so that I have uh, uh, so that's easier to work to work with it because I don't like I don't like pure blacks and as you as I've mentioned before um, on portraits like this where there's there's hair and fabric and skin uh, a lot of a lot of surfaces that are not hard are not solid um, there's a lot of light scattering going on so blacks are going to be pretty rare pure blacks that is. So I'm just going to go ahead and with a, a brush set on uh, multiply or darken or any of those those uh, sort of darkening modes. Uh, I like I like um, multiply is pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to go over and then sort of darken darken the areas that are going to be kind of like in the shadows, not with a black color, uh, just uh, you know sort of like a, a reddish tint. And as you can see, I've already set up my um, my uh, my base lighting, uh, just the way we did it previously, like uh, like this. 
so it's not you know I'm not taking this out of nowhere it's the same light setup that I'm using it's just uh, it's not in the scene now so you don't you don't actually you know see it but it's uh, it's the same 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 one as before uh, what I'm gonna do here is actually hide uh, or help frame this painting a little bit more uh, because I'm not sure what the final frame is going to be, but it's going to be a portrait at least, so it's going to be a little bit more closer to to what we're seeing right now. And I just uh, I could have just cropped it out, but I wanted to keep the sketches that I did previously just in case I needed them. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, so yeah, now I'm just trying to figure out you know if I should add. Uh, some sort of clothes or some special outfit. Initially, what I wanted to do with this is to have her be like a like a, a lava lady or something like that. But uh, I don't know. It felt it just felt tacky, and I ended up going for just you know pure pure portrait. Uh, something that I don't generally do. So normally I'll have you know like a sci-fi theme to it or fantasy or something like that. But no, in this case I just. Uh, yeah, I was trying things. I, I was trying to go for something a little, you know, fantasy-oriented, fantasy-themed, but uh, it didn't didn't really work out. So right now, uh, I'm just sort of drawing the the, the body, uh, making sure that this thing actually kind of works uh, before I put clothes over it. And uh, yeah, this is. I mean, I'm not gonna put much time into this. It's going to be very very rough. And that's that's the idea. What I like to do when I when I do portraits like this is to um, keep like the stuff that doesn't really matter until the very end, uh, for the very end, um, meaning uh, everything but the face. So you know the the outfits or the the accessories or background and all this this kind of stuff that surround the face. Uh, those are the, those are the things that are secondary to the piece and at I could cut them, you know, worst case, uh, if it doesn't if it doesn't work too well up to, at, uh, at the end. So what I like to do is to simply, you know, do something very very rough, like very very sketchy, and uh, keep it like that until the very end, until I'm satisfied, uh, or until I, I I make up my mind on what I actually want to do, uh, and then you know, then after I'm done on the face, actually go back to that and finish it up. You. Like I said also previously in a, in a previous chapter, is you, this could have all been figured out if I if I spent more time on the line art. But I like the more organic um, sort of process, and this is something that a lot of people don't like and would rather not do, and that's completely fine. It's just like it's a preference of mine. It's maybe not a good preference because it makes the the whole world a little bit chaotic. But uh, at this point, I kind of know where I'm going. I I kind of have confidence that even though it's not starting off on you know, the best way possible I know that I'll, I'll sort of manage eventually so but yeah, if you're just starting I would recommend that you, you know you plan your things a little bit a little bit better than me so you know maybe spend a little bit more time on the line art and then you know go at the colors maybe starting with um, with just one light source and then adding the other ones on top of it all right if you're uh, if you're if you're if you want to go on an adventure, then uh, go at it the way I'm doing right now. So, like I said, I, I'd like to spend uh, the majority of the time, at least initially, on the face itself and not worry about, you know, the surroundings too much, uh, because I like to give my characters character. <laughs> I like to, I like to flesh them out as soon as possible, so that I know if they're working or not. Because this is the kind of this is the step where sometimes I'll just I'll just get rid of the character if uh, you know if initially she's not like she's not as pretty as I wanted her to be, or she's, I don't know if there's something wrong with her that I, I I'd rather just you know start over because it's it's too big of a deal. Uh, this is you know at least I won't have I waste too much time on, on on like her outfit or haircut and that kind of stuff that that would absolutely absolutely uh, not help towards the the final result. So uh, I want to make sure that the face is is properly done first. And in this case, I had this this particular light setup that I wanted to go for. So I wanted to try it out first. You know, uh, there was always a possibility that uh, it didn't it wouldn't it wouldn't work properly. Like uh, in my head, it kind of worked, but maybe 
uh, maybe once I did it, it, it wouldn't. So um, that's what I wanted to try as soon as possible. So that's why you know I lit up. I used the, the main light source right from the bat, so to lit to light up her uh, her nose and then the top of her hair, uh, and then see if I can make that work. And so far, it looks it looks very messy, and she <laughs> she doesn't look too good. But uh, I'm just sort of laying out all the colors, and then I'll sort of arrange them to make them work. So that's kind of that's kind of the idea. I just put everything out there, put all the different shades I kind of want to use, all the different uh, different colors, different different values that I think I'll, I'll need. And then after that, I don't have to color pick as much. So that's that's kind of how I work. I like to put everything on the canvas first. It might not look as pretty, uh, but at least I won't have to go and color pick because that gets annoying. It's, it just makes everything a little bit slower it makes the process slower so I like when everything is on the canvas already and I can just like color pick really really quickly uh, from the colors that already exist it makes it really really quick and there's no interruption in the process which I like as for the uh, you know the kind of brushes that I'm using for this <clears throat> um, very very simple I'm using just a, a, a you know soft round brush uh, one of the Photoshop defaults uh, this is actually pretty good for skin, so this is the one I'll use most of the time for when I, when I do skin, at least initially. Uh, towards the end, we'll use a little bit uh, more, a little bit more brushes, so like different stuff to to give a little bit more textures. But initially, uh, since we don't want any kind of uh, you know brush strokes, at least not too many brush strokes on skin, because it tend, you know you want skin to be a little, as smooth as possible, especially for uh, you know, female characters. Um, uh, yeah, I just uh, the soft brush that actually works really really well. So the idea is that you start with a bigger brush, you know, and uh, you know you work on most of the details with a bigger brush, and then as as you progress and as you as you uh, you know get more and more polish, you you sort of reduce the size of the brush as you go, and uh, you know the same the same as usual where uh, you want to keep the majority of the details and the, uh, you know the frequency of the de of the details around the focal points in this case you know for portraits it's always the eyes uh, so you want to have all the details around the eyes nose mouth mouth area and everything else really in the painting doesn't doesn't matter too much uh, it can be it can be a lot a lot looser so for uh, you know around the eyes for example my line is going to be really really crisp uh, you'll see like smaller details the nose everything is going to be like you know properly painted as opposed to some of the, the hair maybe at the bottom of the at the bottom of the canvas uh, or at the top or on the sides where it really doesn't matter too much it's the same with the ears um, you know it doesn't have to be as polished as as uh, the areas around the eyes or nose and mouth and that those 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 places because it's not something that you'll you'll likely stare at for a long time. It's most, more like uh, those kind of things that are in your peripheral vision and you probably won't even look at, you know, at the ears. Uh, you'll see, you look at the character, it's like, oh, nice, okay, you look at the face, but that's about it. Yeah, you know, your, your, uh, your brain's gonna take care of the, the surrounding areas and you, you won't have to actually look at them directly. And if you don't look at them directly, then there's no point in spending too much time on it. So yeah, for the majority of, majority of the face, soft round brush works uh, really, really well. And for the uh, you know the kind of the style that was going with this, uh, you know you can kind of see it's, it's got like it's kind of like Asian uh, flavors, but it's also kind of like a white face. So it's kind of like a, a mix between the two. Um, and also add the layer of stylization, so the eyes are clearly too big. You know, the the nose is a little bit too small. So it's not it's not this this the shape of a, a real face. It's just uh, uh, believable enough that it looks like a face and doesn't look too distorted, so that it's not uh, you know ugly or anything like that. At least it's not prettiest right now because <laughs> it's still a little bit rough. But uh, yeah, like in the end, the goal is to have a stylized anatomy and while still remaining very believable so you, you look at it you're like oh it's clearly the face and it works but then you're like the second look is uh oh wait a minute something's something's not quite right with this it's it's yeah like it's not like a real face you know, the proportions are different while still being believable that's a goal when doing portraits uh it's always easier uh, to have the character look at the camera 
it it always makes for a more I guess a more intimate experience when you look at the when you look at the character so it's you know you, you get the contact the visual the, the, the contact the emotional contact through the eyes right away um, and generally that's what I do uh, in this case I, I wanted to try something else I wanted to try uh, sort of not relying on that you know that that layer of emotion and trying to keep uh, that out of the way so that I can focus more on the, the technical side so making sure that the face is actually really really uh, accurate and uh, because when at least that's one of my uh, that's one of my like tricks <laughs> if you want uh, to look back at some of the pieces I've done previously and kind of like understand what I what I was going for is uh, I you can always use like the stare of somebody as a, a mean to distract from other things so other details that might not work as well um, so just the eyes like looking away uh, already diminishes the impact of the focal point by a lot uh, for a portrait so you know as opposed to if the character was looking straight into the camera into the eye of the viewer uh, the focal point would be much stronger and that's just um, that's just a connection your brain makes uh, you know whenever you look whenever somebody's looking at you and you look back it's there's there's a connection there and when when that's not happening with a painting then it's not as intense and as a result then you you're not attracted to the the eye as much so you have more time to look around the painting and kind of see the flaws uh, so a quick you know quick trick if you want to if you want to you know put all the all the eggs in your basket if you have you know if you want to put all the ball in your court uh, you know make sure that the character is looking at the camera uh, it actually helps a lot and empower the focal point even more in my case I wanted to play I didn't want to play it safe I wanted to uh, experiment a little bit uh, because I've done you know I've done a decent amount of portraits and I've used that trick a little bit too much, so I wanted to try and see if I can if I can get something decent without using uh, using using that. So, and also, you know, the character is not facing straight to the camera because it's again it's a little bit a little bit too easy when you have this this sort of symmetry. Uh, it's always a little bit harder when it's kind of tilted at like a, like some sort of an angle where uh, you can see the volumes a little bit better. Also, uh, yeah, so. In this case, I was pretty satisfied with the face as, as it was, you know, coming, coming. But there was still something wrong with the with the hair. Like I, I was, I wasn't too happy with the hair at this point. And uh, you know, still same same deal with the outfit. The outfit, I'm not liking it one bit. So what I'm gonna do a little bit a little bit later, actually, pretty soon, is to. Uh, fix the hair and make it like longer so that it hides a portion of the the, the torso the uh, upper body and as a result kind of hide also uh yeah hide things that i didn't want to figure out <laughs> so you know use all the tools that you can that you have at your disposal so yeah use all the tools that you have at your disposal whenever you're working on portraits like this it's Always, uh, I would always recommend that you use um, references. Uh, in my case, I I kind of know enough about the anatomy of the the face that I I'm not using one uh, for this particular one. I wanted to challenge myself and see you know, if I can create something that's that still reminds me of like a human, like it, it could be somebody, but it's clearly clearly not, you know, clearly like you know made up. Uh, so that's why I don't like to use references because most of the time, like whenever I do, which is not that often, but when I do, uh, my my characters end up looking a little bit too much like the portrait, and I, I can I can never like shake that off. I can never get rid of that 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 part. So my solution is just to not use any, uh, which is uh, not what I would recommend to the majority of the people. Uh, you know, always use references unless you become really, really uh, uh, comfortable without. So the second you're questioning something, you know, like, a, oh, what was the light supposed to look like in here? Or where is that, how is that volume interacting with this other volume? And whenever you have a question, it means that you're not, that you should probably, you should probably use a reference. 
So yeah, here it is, uh, the time where I'm <laughs> getting rid of the, the old haircut and making, giving her long, long hair. Uh, and actually, this is gonna help the flow of the, the painting a lot more. So even though you know, even though it's a portrait, there still needs to be some sort of uh, composition within within the canvas. I can't just be you know a bunch of you can't you can't just be a, a person standing there and uh, you know ha having you ignore everything else. Uh, yeah, there there needs to be a structure, and uh, in this case, you know the the flow by having like the short hair and then the rest of the body. There was kind of a disconnect between the two, so. You know, but having longer hair, kind of, the read is a little bit more vertical. It feels a little bit better, um, and at the same time, it hides a bunch of stuff that I, I won't have to paint later. <laughs> it's just, just great. At this point, I'm really like just polishing what I've already painted, and for the face itself, at least, it's going to be pretty much uh, the rest of this lesson. Like, the, I'm not gonna be spending too much time changing the features of the face they're pretty much all there i'm just going to be like refining them and polishing the the skin a little bit tweaking the the colors here and there and that's the that's really like the the most time consuming thing whenever you do uh uh the, the portrait of a, of a female at least for me uh because there's a lot of different uh different elements but they have to be sort of mixed and merged perfectly otherwise Otherwise, it just stand out and looks it looks kind of bad. So I know it's a little bit a little bit sexist, but with males, not sexist, but like you know, with males, you can make a little bit you can make more mistakes. Like it's never at least for me, it's never a goal to make a beautiful male. <laughs> Maybe you know, from for some female artists, it is, but in my case, it's never that's never my intention. Like I want to give character to a male. That's like a goal that. Is uh, more interesting to me, uh, and character means that you can you can be a little bit rougher with the features. You can have, you know can, you can make mistakes almost, and sometimes mistakes actually work pretty well. With a female face, I find that uh, for the kind of stuff that I want to achieve, which is you know this, this sort of classic beauty, at least something that I find beautiful, uh, I have to be very very careful with the kind of features that I use, and. Uh, Whenever, whenever something is a little bit out of place, then suddenly, to me at least, it doesn't it doesn't look as pretty. So, uh, I'm very, very uh, meticulous when it comes to the time to finishing up, you know, a, a, a female face uh, because everything has to be like spot on. So while I'm not there yet, uh, it's getting there. So I'm starting to use smaller and smaller brushes because. I'm starting to nail down all those those final details, final final volumes. Uh, not everything is is finalized yet, but uh, everything, at least all the facial features, not going to change at this point. Like I, uh, it's everything everything is there, and I like the position, the the size of everything. So it's just really, uh, you know, the surface of the skin, making sure that the volumes read well, and that you know transitions and between colors feel feel nice and alive. That she doesn't she doesn't feel like you know dead so making sure that the light is sort of scattered properly throughout the surface of the skin so it gets it gets very very tricky at this point so you have to you have to rely on a lot of observation so you know have a bunch of pictures up and um, you know refer to those as much as possible to understand how how light reacts properly on the different surface depending on you know different light setups but yeah so uh, uh, Right now, like I said, I'm using a smaller and smaller brush, and that's fine because um, later on I'll be I'll be smoothing everything out with a blend uh, with a smudge brush. So right now, as you can see, it's it's still very fa fairly rough. Like I'm, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of brush strokes that we can still see that give this this kind of bad texture to the skin. So as if it was like a little bit bumpy, like a like a I don't know what exactly like a big orange. Um, it's killed up orange. Um, no, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible comparison. But uh, yeah, it's just like this bumpy texture. That's not that's not representative of a nice, you know, smooth skin. So those are. This is all gonna be smoothed out uh, later. So I'm not gonna be worrying about it too much for now. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna stop here, and then we're gonna pick it up in the next chapter. So I'll see you then.